What's up YouTube, it's Borat back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Lightning Network. If you watch to the end of the video, I'll be going over what the Lightning Network is, how I interact with the Lightning Network using Blue Wallet and Strike, and then finally why the Lightning Network is going to completely disrupt traditional banking institutions like Western Union. Feel free to jump around using the video timeline down below if you just want to see the demo between Strike and Blue Wallet, but I do think the rest of the information in this video is going to give you guys really good context and background as to why you would even want to use the Lightning Network in the first place. Go down below and smash the like button for the downfall of Western Union and let's level up your brain. So in 2017, there was a really big disagreement in Bitcoin. It became obvious that the Bitcoin blockchain was never going to be able to handle visa level transaction throughput. And there were two different solutions that were proposed to increase the amount of transactions that the Bitcoin blockchain could handle. The first solution was to increase the size of each block in the Bitcoin blockchain. This would of course mean that each block was able to contain more transactions, but it also meant that running a full node or a full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain would become a lot more expensive because each block becoming bigger in digital storage space would mean that you would need a bigger and bigger hard drive to be able to store an entire copy of the Bitcoin blockchain and to further decentralize the Bitcoin network. So for example, some really large blockchains like Ethereum are multiple terabytes big at this point and they're continuing to grow exponentially with new blocks that are added. This would make it basically impossible to do what I'm doing and run an entire Bitcoin full node on a Raspberry Pi out there just in my living room basically. At some point you're gonna need like a data center to run an Ethereum full node and that's going to eventually centralize the full node operators around the few full nodes that can actually purchase that much hard drive space to even run that full transaction history of Ethereum. And so some people in the Bitcoin community didn't care as much about decentralization and they cared more about okay how can we get all of the transactions onto the main Bitcoin blockchain. So they really liked this idea of bigger blocks and they hard forked off to Bitcoin Cash. And as of today about four years later after after that decision to fork off to Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash has lost over 90% of its value versus the original Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin community decided basically we're not going to alter the block size because decentralization is the single most important aspect of Bitcoin. So the second solution, the solution that they proposed was to create a layer two technology above the base layer Bitcoin blockchain where more transactions could be settled faster, cheaper, but with less security than the original base blockchain. One of those layer two solutions is the Lightning Network. So all that background is all well and good, blah, blah, blah. How the f does it work, Rhett? Let me show you. First thing you're gonna wanna do is go download a Bitcoin Lightning wallet. These are different than regular Bitcoin wallets. So if you do already have a mobile Bitcoin wallet, it's a good chance that you're gonna have to do this step anyway and go download one of these different Lightning wallets. For this demo, we're going to use Blue Wallet, but I've also used Moon and Zap in the past and there are a lot of other options options out there. I really like Blue Wallet because it has a nice UI and it has two different custodial setups. If you don't want to run your own Lightning node, like I think probably most people don't want to run their own Lightning node, you can just trust Blue Wallet to set up those Lightning Network connections behind the scenes. And so then basically when you're routing transactions, you're using Blue Wallet's network to route those transactions. The downside to that is that it is a custodial wallet. Blue Wallet kind of has a hand in generating your keys and everything like that. But if you don't want a custodial wallet, you can easily connect your Blue wallet to your Bitcoin full node that maybe you're running on Umbral or something like that. And we'll talk about that and what that means a little bit more here in a couple minutes. So once you've downloaded Blue Wallet, you're not going to have a wallet in here already. You're just going to hit the plus button up here and you're going to select Lightning Wallet and maybe you can call this a YouTube demo. And so then you're just gonna hit this blue create button down here. Your wallet will have been created and then they're gonna give you this key basically that is going to allow you to recover your wallet and you're just gonna wanna store this in a safe place basically. It's just your wallet backup. You're gonna click that you've saved it. And so now when you click on this card up here, it's gonna take you to the wallet and then you can send and receive even very small amounts of money like 10 sats over the Lightning Network. If you're uncomfortable with Blue Wallet actually taking control over your Lightning Wallet, you can actually link your Blue Wallet to your Bitcoin full node run over on Umbral, where you can download the Blue Wallet app and that's actually going to create segregated accounts for you. So you're gonna have one Lightning Wallet on your Umbral full node and then you're going to have this Blue Wallet on your phone where your Umbral wallet doesn't trust your Blue Wallet to spend the funds that are in the Umbral wallet. So the Umbral wallet is kind of like a savings account version of Lightning Network and then the Blue Wallet is sort of like the small funds that you have on your phone to spend day-to-day -day kind of a situation checking account sort of deal. 
And so then instead of Blue Wallet using Blue Wallet backend infrastructure to route your transactions, your transactions will actually be routed through the Lightning node that you have set up on your Umbral. And so benefit number one to this is that you can have a home node where sort of like a savings account, right? You have more money maybe over here that you'd be uncomfortable just keeping on like your $1,000 phone or whatever. You don't wanna put like $10,000 on your phone, sort of like stops making sense after a while. And then benefit number two, if you do have like friends or family that want to use Blue Wallet, but they don't trust Blue Wallet, but they don't wanna run a Lightning node, let's say maybe they trust you. And so you could actually route their payments for them through your Lightning node over on Umbral. And then the obvious drawback to this is that if your Umbral node is actually not very well connected, you're gonna have a really hard time routing payments when you could have just been using Blue Wallet's infrastructure the entire time to get your payments to, you know, go through the system and they sort of handle the back end of all of that. But this does address some of the sovereignty trust issues that some people do have with Blue Wallet. And then if you're like, Rhett, what the f is a full node? I don't even know what Umbral is. Stop speaking Spanish on me. I did make a video a couple months ago and I'll link that up in the cards. Basically, what is a full node? What is Umbral? And how can you set up one of those for yourself? Definitely check that out if you want to learn more. All right, so now that we have our Lightning Wallet set up on our mobile phones, next let's check out the single coolest app on the planet right now, Strike. So second thing that you're going to want to do when you want to interact with the Lightning Network is you're going to want to go download Strike. I have a link down in the description and if you use that link, once you verify your account, you're going to get $5 and I'm going to get $5 and I'm going to love you forever. So what is Strike? Strike's founder Jack Mallers calls it a Bitcoin native neobank, whatever the f that means. Basically, it's like Venmo or Cash App, but for Bitcoin. Now there's probably some goofballs in the comments and they're going, well, Rhett, Venmo and Cash App already have Bitcoin, Rhett, so actually Strike is the same as, as Venmo and Cash App, Rhett. That's what I think some of you guys sound like. The difference is that on the back end, Venmo and Cash App are using their centralized databases to send the money from you to your friends and back. Strike has the same thing where like if I send you money and we're both within Strike, maybe that could happen on Strike's centralized database. But what makes Strike really special is that on the back end of other transactions, it's actually using the Bitcoin network. And so that means if I have Strike and you have any Bitcoin wallet in the world, I can actually send you money from my checking account into your Bitcoin wallet as Bitcoin. So the innovation is not that, oh, Strike has Bitcoin. The innovation is that we can create global final settlement instantly with basically no fees using the Lightning Network. So when you download Strike, you're gonna see your home button with your friends where you can request and pay. You're gonna see your activity. You're gonna see the buy Bitcoin tab where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. And then you're gonna see your personal Strike account. And so it's here in your personal Strike account where you can select different payment methods and you can add either a bank account or a debit card and there's no deposit fee for either of those payment methods. And then also a feature that's in beta right now is the direct deposit feature. And you can see here that I've elected to receive the portion of my paycheck that's going to Strike, 90% Bitcoin and 10% USD. And there's just a very helpful tactile feedback slider here where you can set whatever those percentages are, you know, to whatever you want for your situation. Once I do receive it, I'll definitely be doing a review because I think once this rolls out to everyone, this could be, you know, the death of exchanges as we know them, basically. <laughs> If the fees are good on this, it's like, why would you want to continue to use an exchange when you could just receive a lot of your paycheck, whatever you want, basically, in Strike as Bitcoin right away? Anyway, let's say you want to fund your Lightning Wallet with some Bitcoin. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come back over to our Blue Wallet and check out our Lightning Wallet that we created. We'll note here that the balance is 58,107. So let's deposit 93 Satoshis to get ourselves to 58,200. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Receive up here to Sats, 93 create invoice. So this is four cents that we're going to be sending. We're going to copy this, copy to clipboard, back over to strike, home button, pay, QR code, top right, paste. It's showing here five cents because there are rounding issues when you're sending amounts of money that are this small. And something that could be improved is definitely the transparency on, you know, is this really four cents or is this five cents? The problem is that one Satoshi is so small that 93 Satoshis and 94 Satoshis are both between four and five cents. But if we just hit confirm here, we'll see that back over here, we've received instantly that lightning invoice for 93 Satoshis. And now we're at 58, 
3,200 Satoshis. And so I'd say something that still needs to be worked out with Strike, and it is still a very early company, is that really my balance right now should be something like $9.70.99862, whatever, blah, blah, cents. More than 70 cents, less than 71 cents. And so if you are sending microtransactions like that, you can get kind of screwed on the extra cent, but like who cares kind of. I think Strike will eventually work that out and it will become more seamless. The Lightning Network is still very young and there are people definitely all over the internet pointing out little inconsistencies like that. And when people claim that the Lightning Network is zero fees, but then they see that I just paid an extra cent, that really puts some people off. And so if that is really gonna bother you, I would say wait a little bit for the Lightning Network to mature. Little problems like that, I think, eventually will get ironed out and it won't be as big of a deal. And there will be more transparency on the exchange rate that you're getting and the fees that you're paying. Bottom line though, if your Lightning node is really well connected, you should be paying ideal case zero fees because you're sending directly from you to someone that you have a channel open with. And then worst case, a little bit more than zero fees because you're taking multiple hops through the network. So maybe I have a connection with you and you have a connection with McDonald's. If I'm just paying you, that will be zero fees because we have a channel with each other. But if I wanna pay McDonald's, when I fulfill their Lightning invoice, it will actually jump me to you to McDonald's. And so at that point, you're acting as an intermediary between me and McDonald's and you're charging me some small fee to route my transaction to McDonald's. And that's basically how the Lightning Network works on the back end. Next, let's talk about why the Lightning Network is really important and why it doesn't really matter that the fees are a little bit higher than zero in cases like we just talked about where I don't have a direct connection with McDonald's. So earlier this week, we saw what a crazy innovation the Lightning Network is when Bitcoin became legal tender in El Salvador. El Salvador adopted Bitcoin because they were using the US dollar as a currency. And as we all know, the US Fed has been printing tons of dollars over the last like year and a half. They've been printing so much that actually 20% of all the dollars in circulation were printed last year. And while we might've gotten stimulus checks and stuff here in America, not a lot of that money or none of that money made it over to El Salvador. And so what that did was anyone in El Salvador who was using US dollars as a store of value just had their wealth decreased basically by the amount that the US government printed in the last year. And that's where Bitcoin comes in. It's not only the scarcest asset in the world, which makes it a great store of value, not financial advice, but now because of the Lightning Network, Bitcoin is also an incredible medium of exchange. As of 2016, there were around 1 million El Salvadorians who had moved as immigrants to the United States. And collectively, they sent around four and a half billion dollars from the United States back to El Salvador as remittance payments. These remittance payments are hugely influential to the economy of El Salvador and the people that live there. And a large percentage of all of these remittance payments at some point go through a company like Western Union. If you go to Western Union's website, they have a table where they show you all the different fees that different banks will charge you to send money internationally. And then they have their own calculator for what Western Union will charge you to send some amount of money to some different country and then based on how the person in that country receives the money what the fees are associated with sending that money so for example if we wanted to send $300 from the United States to Mexico and the person was going to get it in their bank account the fee would be whatever you're seeing on screen right now I think when I last look it was something like 4% but it could be more or less depending on what the payment method is and how they receive the money and you'll see that when the transaction is being done by one of these other big major Major banks, there's like a static fixed cost of between 30 and $50 per transaction, which is actually a really significant amount of money, not only to the sender who is sending the money from the United States, but definitely to the people of El Salvador who are receiving this money. So this entire process of having to deal with Western Union and being charged not only fees when you send the money, but then fees when you actually receive the money also, that whole process has been disrupted by the Bitcoin Lightning Network. It is now possible to take dollars from your bank account account, deposit it into Strike, and then send that money over the Lightning Network to someone in El Salvador with one of the government-issued Chivo wallets. And that transaction, because it's over the Lightning Network, is going to be zero fees or close to zero fees. And so then once they're holding Bitcoin, they can actually go to any of the Chivo Bitcoin ATMs that have been dispersed throughout El Salvador and actually receive US dollars for the Bitcoin that they put into the ATM. There is some amount of money that you want to spend on a daily basis that maybe you want to keep it in because the price is not going to fluctuate as much. But 
but then for money that you wanna store over the long term, you're probably going to wanna keep that in Bitcoin because over any four year period, Bitcoin has continued to increase in price and the dollar has continued to decrease in price. The dollar buys you less and less and less and Bitcoin buys you more and more and more. Again, not financial advice, this is just what has played out over the last 10 or 12 years. So what does this mean? This means no more bus rides to Western Union, no more ridiculous fees, just small hops, maybe pennies like we saw in the strike example that we just executed. The innovation is global remittance final settlement instantly. The big criticism of Bitcoin these last 10 years has been, oh, well, you can't buy a coffee with Bitcoin. There are videos circulating all through Twitter of people buying McDonald's and Starbucks with Bitcoin lightning invoices in El Salvador. The technology exists, the infrastructure exists, and in my opinion, it's going to be a no brainer for some of these other countries to implement Bitcoin over continuing to allow Western Union to charge insane fees for sending money as remittances to their citizens. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did learn something, go down below and leave a like. Comment down below if you like content like this or if you have a question about anything that I said. And then subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.